Hi guys, thanks very much for having me. <clears throat> My name is Gary Lavin and uh, I use head and shoulders. <clears throat> um, I'm also the founder of, uh, of VitHit. Um, 17 years seems like a long time um, and it was when I was losing money after about, up till about eight years of it, it certainly was a long time. Um, I'll take you through some of the stories, <clears throat> the good ones and bad ones and um, Hopefully you'll, uh, you, you won't go the same route that I did. Um, now it all seems great um, when you can see Vitus um, in pretty much probably 80% of stores around Ireland and we're in a few different countries, but uh, it was a difficult time for a while um, and that's why my hair went grey. Um, so I, I, first thing I'd like to ask you guys is not all of you would be entrepreneurs. You might work for various different uh, companies. And if you take it back to somebody who started uh, like I did and like the other presenter, Damien, is going to come on, um, is what would you do <coughs> if 90% of your budget was taken away or even 95% of your budget was taken away? Um, would you probably get a new job, I'd say. But um, that, that's basically what people in our position are, are faced with. When we start, we start with zero budget and we just try and take it from there. So <clears throat> back in 99, and I know you, most of you guys have probably only have seen Vitus um, over the last three or four years, um, down to a lot of perseverance and good um, distributors, I guess. Um, but I was a professional rugby player. I got injured, <coughs> and at the time, I thought everybody was want to be healthy, and I was very wrong. Um, I, uh, my, my financial situation <coughs> wasn't great after about six or seven years, but I, I kept trying and I kept holding the product um, out there in front of people because I figured that this health buzz would come along. Um, it finally did, and luckily I hung in there long enough to, to get the benefits of some of it. Um, <coughs> my eureka moment was um, when I had got injured, I was kind of looking to get into the health business. I, tried various different things. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to get into. And um, let me see if this works. Yeah. And I saw a guy on a treadmill, and he was sweating profusely, uh, running for half an hour. And with my knowledge after playing rugby, I knew that when you're on a treadmill for half an hour, you burn approximately 180 calories. And I looked at him, and he got off, and he had a sports drink and drank in 180 calories straight after it. And I was kind of going, why doesn't this guy get it? And I figured that it wasn't a mainstream thought process. People actually didn't realize that sugar was bad for you back then. It sounds crazy now <coughs> because it's, it's uh, in every newspaper and Jamie's school dinners are always talking about it. So I guess I have a lot to thank him for if I ever talk to him. Um, so what I decided to do was put a, a drink together. Um, Irish people don't really want to sacrifice their taste buds. Um, it's just the way we are. If something doesn't taste just as good as their sugary counterpart, they're not going to switch across. That was really the first thing that I learned. We had to get the taste right. I spend approximately between five and nine months on each flavor of, of product because I want to just get it right. It's quite hard to get vitamins to taste just as good as uh, sugary counterparts. Um, I wanted very low in calories, clean inside and out, um, no added sugar, low sugar. And after about five years, I also tried to future-proof it by putting in uh, teas. Uh, teas, is just, teas are becoming a real buzzword now. Um, we've got rooibos tea, green tea, et cetera, et cetera, and there's a lot of health benefits. But the reason why I did it was because I figured someday I might be able to get the product out of Ireland and I might be able to take on one of the, the world's largest drinks companies, a product called uh, Vitamin Water. And even though we have vitamins and water in our product, I didn't want to be associated with them. I wanted to have a few points of difference. Um, and I'll explain later how we actually did end up going head to head with them in the London market, which became quite fun. Um, so there you are, vitamins, juice, water, teas. <coughs> Seems quite simple now, but Back then, um, we were up against um, orange juice, water, sports drinks, and colas, and there really wasn't anything else. So I know the word disruptor has come around a long, a long time um, in the last three or four years. I suppose that's what we were doing. I didn't realize that I just kind of saw a white space out there. Um, straight over to the next bit. Um, I feel that sugar is 
definitely a burning platform. I think we all know that by now. Um, if you're making your money out of sugar, I'd sell my shares straight away. Um, I think lately, retailers need uh, defensive strategies. Um, obesity is a big problem. Um, fat in diets is actually down 20% since the 1970s, but obesity is up uh, 250%. So there's clearly everything's pointing towards sugar. Um, sugar tax, um, now governments are getting involved. They're putting pressure on retailers. Retailers need to reduce sugar. And a lot of the larger companies now are basically saying, isn't it great we're reducing our sugary drinks by 25%, but people um, in general can't ingest any more than 20 to 25 grams of sugar a day, and a lot, a lot of drinks out there might contain 28 to 25 grams. So if you're reducing it to 20 grams, you can't even eat a grape after it. They're still, you know, you're going to be putting on weight. Um, so this is really in the, in the, the public eye at the moment. Um, Straight on to the next one. When we're creating uh, our label, this is not slagging off um, our wonderful consumers, but basically we don't have the money of the Coca-Colas in this world, so we have to be as obvious as possible with our labels. So <clears throat> one of the first things I learned back in 99, we created, and it's still the name of the company, it was called Vitz Drinks Limited, and the product was called Vitz. I thought that Vitz meant vitamins, um, and I did a little bit of research, and after five years of losing money, I found out that people thought it was a German company. They thought it was Vitz, and they didn't really understand what it was. So <clears throat> clearly, I wasn't one of the geniuses. I was one of the geniuses up here. But uh, we figured it out, and we changed the brand name to Vithit. Um, we just don't have budgets uh, that the larger companies have. So, you know, for instance, years ago when they released Sunny Delight, that actually means nothing, but people fired a lot of money into it to make it become a big brand, and then it fell down because of sugar. Um, brand evolution, you're never going to get it right first time. Um, so there's a few brands here um, that you'll see weren't particularly right at the first time, but they got it right eventually. Um, Tom Cruise has a lot of th to thank his uh, dentist for. Um, Miley Cyrus got an improvement in hairstyle. And this is my favorite uh, transformation. John Travolta is looking great these days. Um, brand identity. I often find that companies are trying to speak either above or below, and they just don't get the tone right. It's very important for us that if I'm not relevant anymore, um, who, you know, I come up with a lot of the things we say, I'm now hiring younger people so they actually understand what's going on with the younger people because we kind of feel that young people own the brand and they like to discover it themselves. Um, we weren't even getting involved, I'm sad to say, in social media until about three years ago. When we turned it on, someone said, have a look at how much is on Vithit, and there was a few thousand comments on Vithit, and we weren't even getting involved with them. Um, so it's kind of a brand that, that people like to discover. Um, if you want to talk to young people, you don't talk down to them. So this is a, a perfect example of how not to talk to people, young people. Phil Dunphy, yo. I'm the cool guy. That's, that's my thing. Let me meet this player. I'm hip. I, I surf the web. I text. LOL. Laugh out loud. OMG. Oh my god. WTF. Why the face? People, let's all chillax. Um, you know, I know all the dances to High School Musical, so... We're all in this together. Yes, we are. We're all stars. That means something. You know it. Act like a parent. Talk like a peer. I call it peering. So brands actually do this, and you know it's kind of embarrassing watching that. You see the kids going like this, but this actually happens. There's a lot of communication issues, and we try very consciously not to become the cool dad. Um, a few things that we have hidden around the bottles, um, just to give it a bit more personality, and it's kind of who we are. Um, Vit is kind of an irreverent brand. Um, it's something you can trust. You can always trust that there's all the vitamins and all the teas in there. Um, but you don't have to be whiter than white to be trustworthy. Um, and <clears throat> the, the last one there is quite interesting. We just hide these things around the bottles sometimes. And um, this one here, uh, with 180 calories, you look more like a dart throw than a footballer. And I actually recently got contacted by a dart thrower's wife. And she sent me a, a picture of herself and her husband and uh, saying, you know, not all dart throwers are, are ugly. And uh, well, I'll leave, I'll leave that one to your imagination. Um, so, uh, Vidya likes to be casual and informal. Um, the tone shouldn't be offensive unless you're Darth Thrower's wife. Um, and it's, it's quite uncorporate. Um, it should be discovered 
um, rather than advertise. Now, we have started to do a few advertisements recently, um, and I'll show you some of the, some of the messages that we um, give across, but it's always very short, and the product is always the hero. Um, I often feel that uh, everyone's got an angle, whether you're <coughs> involved in you know, products that could seem boring. Um, I know Damien later is going to come up and show you how he made uh, ice cream more, uh, more exciting. We've, we've done it with drinks. Um, but you're, if you're into milk, uh, you could do what Glam Bia did and make billions out of protein. Um, if you're working for an egg company, you can do what two girls in London did, and they have an 8 million turnover business just for doing egg whites. And if you're in sugar, get a new job. Um, I'll just show you a little bit about um, where our brand has been through some of the packaging that we've had. A lot of it was when we couldn't really afford um, to do anything. Um, so this first one here was around 2005. Um, this was just a stock bottle that we had, and actually the front uh, product is still on the, on the shelves today, but obviously in a much different, more, more glamorous guise. It was around this time when um, I'd been losing a lot of money. I'd put my life savings in. Um, at one stage, I remember uh, I couldn't pay my bin tax, so the bins were parking up outside the house. And uh, you always knew you were doing something wrong if you can't get the bins taken away. Um, so this was around that year. Um, I was always terrible at accounting. I was kind of good at creating products and selling it. Um, but I got a, a partner in, who's still my business partner today, Ian, and he came and looked at the dog's dinner that was accounting in the corner. And he said, <coughs> give me two months, he says, but then we're going to go see somebody. So he introduced me to this woman, Lisa, who I'll never forget her words. And she looked at the, the company books and she said, your company's insolvent. She said, there's 23 companies I've seen in this position. And she said, I've rescued one of them. It was a garden center. Uh, which has no relevance to us whatsoever, but she said, I think we can rescue you guys. She said, Gary, you need to get out of your ivory tower and go out, and you know, I had to get rid of my sales team. She said, you need to go out and sell yourself. And she said to Ian, you need to um, stay in behind a desk and just you know, do all the accounts and do all the un unexciting things. So over the next year and a half, um, I got in my branded van, and I stayed in B&Bs around the country, and I personally sold it into about 2,700 stores. And that was the kind of time that we basically got the product back from the depths of depravity. But um, here is the uh, second brand evolution. We were getting pretty fancy at this stage. Uh, we decided to get our own bottle mold, and this lasted about I think about a year and a half when I realized that we have to move the product on another step. So around uh, 2008, um, we got a new bottle. I actually spotted this online. And um, <clears throat> another thing, obviously, back in 99, there wasn't too much um, internet Googling out back then. So actually, to find a, a product manufacturer that would make the products, find your vitamins, all that kind of thing, was very, very difficult. Um, so I spotted this in a trade magazine, and I went on to Google, and I found them within about a day. I found out who was producing this bottle. And from that point onwards, then, we really took the product to the next level. And you know, I've always said that a product needs to look good, number one. Um, it's got to taste good, number two, but it's got to be good, number three. It sounds kind of obvious, but if you've got the greatest product in the world, which was here at the front, it's still the same product but we couldn't get lift off because um, no one would grab it off the shelves. And eventually, we went to part three of four parts, and, uh, which is this guy here. So um, <coughs> we eventually contacted... Um, the reason why the first ones were so bad is because I designed them myself. So eventually, I decided to go get uh, a proper designer. And <coughs> he came up with this label, and he was the first guy to actually say to me, you have to have a hierarchy of messages. Um, and he said, you know, let's put Vitid out there, number one. Uh, number two, we'll have the purpose of the product. This is this product we have in Scandinavia. And then number three is calories. And after that, really, it doesn't really matter. And I would actually bet now that if we put this on the shelf and took away everything else except for Vitid, no flavors, and just the design there, I think we'd probably sell just as much. I don't want to try it, but I kind of think it might, it might work. Um, people only have about 0.4 of a second to make a choice when they walk by on the shelf. So you really have to grab them. And what we like to do is put all our products uh, beside each other. There's a reason why they're all quite different colors. Um, we want to have a kind of a rainbow effect. So when you walk by, you just glance and you can see Vithid straight away. Now, 
when you've done all your research and created your product, you've got to have unique selling points. There's no point in me creating another Fanta or Club Orange. There's companies that do that a lot better than we do. So I wanted to put in a lot of USPs. Now, when I'm in front of a buyer, it's very important not to crib about other people's products, just talk about your own. But if you can come up with a fact like this and just hand it to the buyer, and I would always say, which is what I said earlier, it's down the bottom right there, recommend a daily intake for you guys who've got good uh, eyesight. Um, for women, it's only 20 grams of sugar a day, men 36, and children, it's 12 grams. Now, I was actually watching Ireland get beaten by Scotland a couple of weeks ago, and I was watching at my friend's house, and his 16-year-old kid arrived in with a bottle of um, flavored milk, which brand I won't mention. But I looked at it, I said, what are you drinking? And I looked at it, and it had 48 grams of sugar. And uh, you know, I looked at his dad, and I, I, I was kind of like, we need to have a chat, because it, it kind of still in this day and age, there's no excuse to let your kids, now I wouldn't be a, uh, I wouldn't be a Nazi in this way, but I mean, your kids should have some amount of sugar, but like, that's enough for the kid for three or four days. Um, but this is very important. When we show this to buyers, I basically will always come in and say, look, Vitted is a defensive strategy for what you're going through at the moment. Um, obviously, they're making a lot of money out of sugar, and the governments are on top of them, and they have to reduce sugar. So I basically show them this. These are all a lot of our competitive products um, across Europe. Um, branding is pointless without sales. Um, when I went to the UK, we actually got listed in Tesco in 2000. 12. I moved to the UK to look after it, um, and I just thought, we're going to get listed in Tesco, it's going to be amazing. Um, I didn't realize how difficult um, British retailers were. One of the great things about doing business here in Ireland is that if you're actually good at what you do, you'll get promoted through the system. In the UK, that's actually not true. Um, so what I did was, um, after two years of asking the, uh, the retailers, the buyers, to, to put us in the fridges where we belong. She had us on 600 shelves on the dry shelf down by the Rice Krispies. Now, our sales were pretty good compared to competitive products, but I wanted them in the fridge because you do about three times more. So they kept refusing flatly. They wouldn't even meet me. Um, so I got on a moped and drove around London in December of 2014. After two years, I got really frustrated with it. And I got frozen almost to death and crashed on my moped at one stage. But I called into 55 Tesco stores, and I basically said to the managers, I said, look, the owner of Lucas Aid isn't coming in to you. Will you give me a shot? So that always kind of was a fun opener. And they let me put my product exactly beside a product that I mentioned earlier, which is vitamin water owned by Coca-Cola. So at the end of doing that, um, I put a young guy then after a month, and for six months, the young guy was basically making sure that in these 55 stores in London, that Vithit was had exactly the same space as the competitive set products. And at the end of it, <coughs> six months, we went and we did some Dunhumby research, which is the internal Tesco research team. And I didn't know what kind of results we were going to get. And it turned out <coughs> that in those 55 London stores, out of 48 competing products, Vithit was number one, three, four, and eight seller. And we actually had 25% of the market. So I brought it back to the buyer. Um, she completely ignored it, <laughs> so it felt like a waste of time. But uh, another couple of retailers didn't ignore it, and that's how we got a big lift off in the UK. So I actually had never used research before. Um, and for any of you trying to um, do some selling in the UK, please feel free to give me a call, because it's all about research over there. It's, it's not like here in Ireland at all. Now. We had, and this just gives you an idea of the type of brand that we are, we don't take ourselves too seriously, we had a, bit, a couple of complaints. You'll notice kind of an annoying foil pack on the top of the bottle. And uh, it's actually because we don't have any preservatives in the product. But um, a couple of people started emailing us and saying, you know, why do you have this? It's very annoying. It's kind of floating around my car in my handbag. So we decided to put this video together. <laughs>
we got a great reaction out of that, and I, I think people do kind of appreciate when you take the mick out of yourselves, not just in a pub, but actually um, on YouTube. Um, so this seems kind of obvious, um, but it has to be done in the right way. Um, there's a friend of mine who, who owns a, a company, and she went out and got lots of investment, and she did loads of advertising, but the product was only in 150 stores. Um, I told her not to take the investment and to just get out there and get selling, and so she kind of doubled up, but she, she survived and she's thriving now. Um, <clears throat> I noticed about two years ago there was a, a beer company launched here. They spent four million in advertising and sampling and all that kind of stuff, and their product wasn't available in any pubs, and they're off the shelf now. This is really important. If you've spent all this time creating a nice product, and you do your research and people actually like it, um, I think you need to get out in the streets and get it into people's hands. Back in the day, we couldn't afford to give people bottles, so we used to stand there and just pour a little bit and give it to them and point them into the, into the shop. Um, but our, uh, our budget has got a little bit better now. Our advertising image, we've only started advertising about a year and a half ago. <coughs> you might see if you live in Dublin, some of these big belly bins. Um, our advertising message always has to be clean, which is the way we like to portray the product. Um, the product always has to be the hero. We might put a quirky slogan up above. We put a hashtag, health yourself on it. Um, funny thing about hashtags, actually, I was a little bit behind the times. I went to, um, in London last year, I went to some PR lovey release, and I walked out of it and I heard two girls going, I can't believe they don't have a hashtag for this event. So this is really where we're, we're coming to now. Everything you go into and everything you do, People seem to have hashtags to it, so we've linked onto this and hashtag health yourself, has hashtag vit it. So you'll see here there's kind of a, a repetitive motion of what we have. We have the rainbow products on top of white, and eventually, as our brand develops, we'll try and keep this pretty much the way it is so that when people see these ads, that they'll know it's vit hit, because um, you might be going by at 100 miles an hour in a car, and you don't really have that much time to be looking at ads. Um, We've started to use a little bit of research, as I said. This is uh, where we ran back into our friends uh, who own vitamin water, Coke, and <coughs> we went to the largest uh, retailer in the UK, um, happens to be a pharmacy. Sorry, the top three largest retailers in the UK. And we went in, and we're the guys in red, and uh, this is a great thing to be able to show. We can never mention uh, specifically, because we're using internal research, but you kind of get the idea. Um, they were the purple guy, <coughs> the evil one and uh, the evil overlord, and we're the guys in red, and in the middle is another competitor. Um, so we went in, um, in a year and a half ago, and we now have 80% of the shelf um, sales of, well, 78 to be exact, of their functional drinks. So when we have this as a test case, and we go back to the likes of Tesco, um, this is very telling. And um, when you go back to, us, to retailers like that, and they're missing out on these kind of sales, um, they, they get the message pretty quick. When we did um, <coughs> some international trade shows, it's where we picked up a lot, of our, a lot of our clients, because if you're in a distributorship, you'd probably get 20 phone calls a day with people trying to get you to sell their products, and you'll always put the phone down with them and not bother phoning them back, so how do you get your point across? So the one on the left here is a three by three meter stand. We've been doing that since maybe 2000, never really picking up too many international customers. The one on the right, although it's not a great photograph of it, is actually 26 square meters. We used it this year. We, we probably quadrupled our budget. We really decided to throw some, some money at a European trade show this year, and it made a massive difference. We're currently um, starting with another seven distributors across Europe, and we've just launched in the US as well. So we've, we've more than paid for this stand. Um, so I think for any of you doing these kind of shows, you need to kind of spend it before you can make it. So where are we currently? Um, although we've started from very humble beginnings, uh, we're growing at about 40% here in Ireland, 50% uh, internationally, but that can change when you pick up a new distributor. So we're, we're planning to go between 50 and 100% um, internationally. Uh, currently, we hold a, a fantastic uh, position in Ireland, and uh, I think a, a, a nice word has to go out to Richmond Marketing, who are distributors, as um, one of the girls from Richmond here. Um, Quick story, we were with one distributor, Richmond kept courting us, saying you must come over to us, blah, blah, blah. And the first month that we actually did decide to move, um, we were, um, I think, 3,000% up in the first month that we went to Richmond. So 
even though the product was, was clearly a product that people wanted, um, it wasn't a mass market product until about three years ago we moved to, to a mass market distributor. It made a big difference for us. Um, so 70% of the functional drinks market in Ireland is pretty good. Um, we're trying to get, get to that in other stages. Um, in other countries, uh, currently actually in Iceland of all places, there's only 320,000 people live in Iceland, and um, Vithit is going to sell three and a half million bottles there this year, so I don't know if they're bathing in it or what's going on, but it's going very well over there. Uh, we're selling in over 15 countries, um, we're leading the health market in boots, um, fastest growing health drink in Tesco and Sainsbury's over in the UK, um, and minimum 50% growth expected in 2017. So here's some of our um, international clients that we're pretty proud of. The Pepsi one is an unusual one. That's um, our distributors, um, independent Pepsi bottlers in the US um, have taken us across. And um, we've got um, a few other interesting distributors here. Um, HEB are a big Texan company. A very interesting company, you should Google them. They've got like 100 stores and they turn over, I think, $23 billion in those 100 stores. They're a pretty incredible company. So. Um, that's about it for me, guys. Um, if you haven't learned anything, at least you'll learn not to be a, an uncool dad. Thank you very much. <laughs>